outside the Midwest, and obviously you gave up a number of professional opportunities coming back for your senior year. Uh, just how, how, how has the Iowa community sort of embraced you, and why were you guys just such a good fit, and how has that developed uh, over your time here? You know, I mean, I think as soon as I got here, I just really fell, fell in love with the, the university and the campus. You know, I, I just, the people around here, you know, it's, it was an adjustment coming from a big city, um, and, and it's a lot different. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it's really nice how it's different. You know, I, I love both places. And, um, you know, once I came here, I just really, you know, the, the, I fell in love with everything. You know, I, I just, you know, love this, this university, and I, I've been very thankful to be here. Uh, for the time I have been, so you know, I, it's 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 really been uh, special, and I think all the guys on the team, really, you know, welcomed me with open arms, and you know, made me feel like you know I was part of joining a new family, and that's really what it's been since I got here. It's it's really just a family environment, and I think you know people have taught me about Iowa and just different things, you know, that I had never known, and I I hadn't really been to the Midwest ever, and <laughs> you know, I I was a city kid, so you know, I think. When I came here, uh, you know, me in the summer, Austin Ash, you know, me and him were really close, and and, and he kind of just was like, kind of showing me, you know, what Iowa City is about, and, and same with Connor McCaffrey, and, and obviously the older guys with Nicholas Bear and Jordan and Cordell and everybody. So I, I really was, uh, it was really cool uh, to to meet those guys and, and to be here. Mark Yamarch. Yeah, Luca. It looks like now you're going to get all 27 of your regular season games in. Um, what has it taken, as an athlete, what has it taken for you guys to get to this point where a lot of teams weren't able to do that? Like, what kind of sacrifices did you have to make? You know, how, how difficult was it to go through all this? You know, a credit to our guys. I think we've, we've shown a tremendous amount of maturity in our uh, ability to handle, you know, th this kind of unprecedented uh, kind of time we're in. You know, me and Connor and, and, and some of the leaders on this team kind of had a meeting before the season started on, on what it's going to have to be like. You know, it's... You know, we, we, we had to make sure that, you know, you're going home and, and then you're coming to the gym and that's really all you're doing. You know, you, we can hang out with each other, you can hang out with other people, you can't really see family. You know, I haven't been able to see my dad like I usually can. Um, and, and, and obviously I, I haven't seen my mother in a while. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's different, but, you know, you, you have to be able to, you know, understand that, you know, what your priority is. You know, we want to be able to play in March. We want to be able to play all our games, and that's the priority. And in order to do that, you have to be smart. You have to be careful. You know, can't be going out. Uh, can't be walking around downtown. You know, the, it's just a lot of things. You can't put yourselves in positions, you know, where you could potentially get sick. And, you know, obviously we don't want to put our coaches and the other people around us at risk as well. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a lot different. You know, I think it's it's harder mentally on every basketball player because there's no distraction from you know, you, you go home and, and, and you go to the gym, that's it. You know, there's nothing else. There's no escape. But, you know, I think for, the, for everybody on the team, you know, we love the game of basketball and we love the opportunity that, you know, is in front of us. Um, so it, 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 it's exciting for us. And, you know, we're, we're a group that would do it, whatever it took uh, to make sure that we can, we can play all our games. And I think there's been a lot of teams across the country that have done a great job, and I commend everybody in the Big Ten because, you know, we only had, I think, you know, Michigan State and, and, and obviously Nebraska being canceled or, or moved. And, you know, when a lot of other leagues, you know, some, some, got, some teams still haven't you know, gotten to 15 games. You know, it's just it, it's crazy. But, you know, I, I just really commend everybody in this league and, and we're really thankful uh, for the Big Ten and having daily testing and, and all of that that has, you know, provided us the opportunity to play. Tom Kaker. Look, I know you're focused on bigger things this year, but um, we asked Fran earlier about retiring your number, and, and he said it's a no-brainer. What What are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, that's that's a dream come true. You know, I, I think when I, you know, came to university, you know, I don't think if you told me then that I would, you know, be in a position to have my jersey retired, I, I would have told you you're crazy. You know, I wanted to work as hard as I could, but. And, and play as hard as I could, but you know, for that to happen, you know, it's 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 truly special. And you know, I've this place has given me so much, and I, I just hope that I have given half as much back. Chad Lysko. Hey, Luke, are you familiar with like Ken Palm Analytics? Yes. What uh, you guys have really risen up the ranks defensively in the last month. How would you? What's the best way you could describe? 
what has changed in the evolution of your defense as a team? You know, I think the effort was always there. Um, I think the, the execution and the ability, um, you know, to really stay connected, um, I think that was the part that was lacking. I think we always played hard, but, you know, our ability to be connected, you know, communicate, talk, and I think everyone just kind of, you know, after we dropped a couple games, we, you know, when you look back at those games, you know, we realized our offense was good enough to win all those games. But we went through a, went through a stretch where, you know, our offense couldn't score, and that's when the team made a run because we couldn't get stops to stay in the game. So we, we kind of, I think the whole team kind of just, you know, understood that there's one thing holding us back, and that's our ability to get stops. And, uh, you know, once we, I think the first game that we really, you know, played at that level of defense was at Indiana. And we obviously came short in that game, but the start of that game, you know, we were up 17 to four uh, when I got my second foul. And, and so that was just, you know, speaking to, you know, our, our ability to get stops and then go down and score. And, you know, our offense wasn't even great in that stretch. You know, it was just, you know, our ability to shut down other teams from scoring. Uh, you know, we know we're going to eventually score at some point. Um, but, you know, I think, and then you show games like Penn State where we're stuck at 54, both teams, for like three minutes. Neither team could score. And that, and that just speaks to us being able to get stops when our offense is not as good. And I think that's one thing in the Michigan game, you know, we had that in the first half because, you know, obviously, you know, I wasn't great in the first half and, and our whole team, you know, we didn't shoot the ball particularly great in the first half, but we were still right there because we were able to get stops. And then obviously we got away from that in the second half. Um, but I think through the stretch, you know, we've just shown really a lot of resiliency on that end and, you know, just a lot of toughness on that end. And we've really committed to bettering ourselves as a defensive team and we're going to continue to do that because we know the better our defense gets, you know, the, the, the better we'll be and, and the farther we'll make it. Hi, Klaus. Uh, you had the thing with the cyst a couple of years ago and Jordan's had hip surgeries. These are not common basketball ailments. Do you sort of relate to each other on that level and I mean when, when you look at what he's done this season and what he's come back from how do you evaluate that you know I, I think you know when I first got here and I started playing with Jordan you know I immediately understood that this guy was this guy was tough you know he played through anything you know I think he's had so many different injuries you know whether it be feet or whatever that are actual regular basketball injuries and I think you know that's something that you know I, I think we kind of share in common is just we're we're, we're going to battle through whatever we can, uh, you know until we hit a point where we we have to be told like you know you have to get surgery or this has to stop you have to stop playing and you know, get better and and I think that just speaks towards his toughness um, and his ability to push through adversity um, and I think you know it was the same thing for me you know I I had no idea that you know I had. Um, whatever going on in, in, in my abdomen and then I found out and I had to push through that and, and you know you've seen his you know thank God I had a you know way quicker recovery than you know Jordan had to go through um, and, and I didn't have to get it done you know twice and so that just that amount of adversity you know you have to you know commend a guy who can push through all of that and then be able to come back and do what he's done for us this year and, and be our leader and obviously, you know, control games from, you know, his passing and his ability to shoot the ball. And it's just, uh, it's it's really nice to play with him. You know, obviously we missed him last year and other guys stepped up, but, you know, we, we always miss, you know, it, when he's not out there. So we, uh, I'm very thankful to play with a player like that. Don Yeah, Luca, there's uh, obviously a lot of, uh, you're looking forward to a lot on Sunday and everything. You guys do another game before that. Is it uh, is it a little tough to, to focus on Nebraska and, and what you got coming on Thursday? I, I don't think so at all. You know, especially when you, you you watched the game last night and Nebraska beat Rutgers by 30 or they were up by 30 at some point. So I think we're all really focused on what we have to do, and uh, we know this team is good um, and they've beaten some good teams in our league. And, and I think we're all we're all very focused because we understand uh, you know that. You know, if we win these next two games, we're putting ourselves in a really good position um, in, in terms of March. So I think we're, we all know that the next game on the schedule is the most important. You know, obviously, you know, we, we know that senior day is Sunday, but, you know, these are, these are two more very important games for our group. Just uh, one or two more for uh, Luca. Go ahead, Scott Dockerman. Yeah, Luca, last uh, November uh, in a game against Penn State, Davion Nixon pulled kind of what, some people call a Euro step on an interception return for a touchdown. And 
he was asked afterwards if he'd ever played you in one-on-one and who would win and he said he didn't know and he'd have to body you up um, <laughs> have you ever uh, played Davion in any and in, in even just shooting around and, and what's kind of your relationship with him because he was a first team all-american Player. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I've, I've grown closer to, to Davion, like, the more years we've been here, but we were close as soon as, you know, I got here, and, and as a freshman, I think he came halfway through the semester into the dorms, so, you know, he was always a guy who was, you know, one of the nicest people I've ever met, just really outgoing, uh, very cool dude, and, 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 and I got to know him really well, and he's, he's, he, I mean, this this season, how he performed, how dominant he was, was really impressive to watch, and it was really cool to see. You know, I think I I got really close to you know a lot of the guys on on the football team. You know, my freshman year, and to see all of them. You know, when we talk about Geno Stone, Tristan Wirfs, AJ Epinesa, all of them just you know succeed and and dominate. And obviously, Davion doing the same thing. It's it's been really you know cool to watch that. But no, I I, I don't think you know I I'd been to the gym a couple times. You know, with AJ, and I, I don't think you know I ever got to see Davion play. I saw his, I watched a journey on him, so I watched his highlights and he looked like he was, he was a tank down there and he was pretty good. But no, I mean, I think if he tried to push me out, then you know, I'd, I'd, I'd try to shoot some jumpers and we'll see how he would deal with that. But no, I, I think it would be a lot of fun and I'm very excited to see where his career goes from here. Uh, he's a tremendous worker and, and like I said, he's, he's a better person off the court than he is a football player, you know, and, and especially, you know, before this year when he wasn't, you know, um, as dominant as he was this year, he was, you know, outgoing and, and I already knew who he was because of how cool of a person he was. So it, it's really cool to see, you know, how, how he's developed in his time here. All right. Thank you, Luca.